Hey everyone, my name is Mason and welcome back to Satisfactory News. In Satisfactory, there are two main ways to build, mega factories and modular factories. In this video, I'm going to talk about the advantages and disadvantages of both playstyles as well as the logistics to keep in mind when using them. Let's start with mega factories. With this kind of factory, you're going to be bringing in everything from all around the map to a central location and producing everything in one giant building or a series of closely connected buildings. You'll like this method if you feel that it's easier to process everything in one spot and not run around the map. If you need something, it's just a short distance away. Plus, it's easy to grow, and if you need another segment of your factory, you can just add on to it. You can combine production lines for more advanced items, and you can create these advanced items without worrying about which parts you have access to, since everything will be produced close by. This also allows you to easily build a central storage room where you can keep a spare bin of every part you might need to build something. It's not without its disadvantages, though. The first one is space. These kinds of massive factory complexes take up a ton of space, and can be complicated to build unless you make them above any tree lines or terrain, or if you build in the relatively flat desert. You also might need to consider the overall size and design from the start, otherwise you may outgrow the space you designated. The other major downside is about performance. The more stuff you have in one spot in this game, the more of an impact your factory will have on the frames per second and overall performance that you're getting in the game. The game can effectively ignore far away factories and items, but when it has to consider everything that you as the player might interact with or see in a huge mega factory, that can be quite taxing. And even for high-end PCs, there can still be lag and hitches, even if the overall frame rate is high. However, one big but kind of intangible upside is that mega factories are cool. They look impressive, and they get a lot of upvotes on Reddit. If bragging rights and design is something you care about, then consider making an impressive mega factory. So how do you create a mega factory? It's actually a little more nuanced than it seems. Firstly, it's nearly impossible and certainly impractical to have absolutely everything in one spot on the map. Nuclear power is a fine example. You probably don't want your nuclear power production and the resulting radiation to be near your main factory. Sure, you could, but you're gonna have a bad time. You'll also most likely have certain components that require a lot of liquids be produced elsewhere, at least for the portion that directly requires those liquids. This is because liquids are inefficient to transport, Long pipes can be problematic, liquid train cars aren't super useful, and trains themselves are harder to time perfectly. And the process of packing and unpacking liquids for transport adds a lot of time and effort to a production line. You should attempt to build your mega factory near a water source so that you can harvest as much as possible for recipes that do need it. But inevitably, certain things like oil power will need to be built closer to the source unless you are extremely dedicated to the mega factory lifestyle. To get everything you need to your mega factory, you will employ two main modes of transportation. The first and most common is going to be belt and pipe buses. These are long bridges of belts and pipes that deliver various materials to your main base. These can have bundles of nine or even more belts on them and will probably have junctions where belts enter and leave as you pass by nodes. These will make the long journey across the map into your base to be processed in mass quantities. The second way will be an expansive vehicle network, most likely dominated by trains. For resources that are very far away from your main base, a train track will likely be easier to build than belts, especially when you need to weave around complicated terrain. Plus, a world full of trains is a lot of fun. So, once your materials are set to come into your base, it's time to decide what you want to do with them. This will depend on what stage in the game you're at, but you will likely want to work on some more advanced materials or space elevator parts. And that once again leaves you with a couple of options. You can bring in all of, let's say, your copper and start producing it into ingots and then wire. Then when you need wire, you belt off that much wire from your wire plant somehow. This requires you to keep track of how much you've taken away and how much capacity you have left, but it can be pretty cool to have a massive factory dedicated to just one base component. The second choice is to create a self-contained production line in the form of a tower or arm for one advanced item and work backwards all the way back to the most basic components. So keeping the copper example, you might decide that you want to make a dedicated tower in your mega base for computers. You'll want to start by deciding how many computers per minute you'd like to make. Then you will work your way down and figure out how much of each base component you'll need, and then siphon off the amount of copper ore that you need for that project from the source. Building this tower or module or whatever you want to call it can take many forms, but you might start by creating a base floor that contains the smelters for all the raw materials. 
This can help determine the footprint of the tower. Then you can build the second floor and make the next tier of components. It certainly doesn't have to be a tower, but you'll likely have dedicated spaces for certain items inside of your mega factory. As you move up this tower or whatever it is, you may end up with fewer and fewer machines, like manufacturers, so you can fill the space by having multiple parts being made on the same floor. Then you top it off with the final step, in this case a series of manufacturers making computers. Because space could be tight if you didn't plan your mega factory perfectly, you may benefit from logistics floors. This floor is where you'll send all of the materials from the floor below it, probably using floor holes and conveyor lifts. Then you can move the belts around and bring them up via floor holes to the floor above, which will help conserve space on the next manufacturing floor and keep it nice and clean. Logistics floors will become more important the more machines and the more parts you have to deal with on each new floor and can help prevent visible spaghetti. With all of these towers or arms containing factories, you'll probably have a network of belt bridges transporting components to wherever they need to go, whether that's storage or another production line. It's going to look busy and it could be confusing, but it's all going to be in one spot and look like a very busy factory. My general recommendation for building with the mega factory method is to give yourself lots of space to work with. Build massive structures with more than enough room for walking around. You don't really know how many belts and machines you're going to have until you try to cram them all in together, unless you plan in extreme detail beforehand. So don't be afraid to spread out and use more room than you think you need. This map is huge, and a few extra meters in each direction won't hurt. I'm guilty of making super compressed factories, and that's how I end up in situations where I have to clip belts or make a design that I just don't like looking at. Now let's talk about modular factories. Modular factories or outpost factories turn your game into a series of smaller setups. Essentially the rule for this method is that near a collection of resource nodes, you will build a small factory that processes those resources. It will definitely process ore into ingots, but it will also probably process those ingots into another component like iron plates or wire. Factories for more complex items will be placed in locations that are either aesthetically pleasing or convenient for a certain material. For example, a crystal oscillator factory will probably be made near a quartz deposit, which may still require other materials to be shipped in from elsewhere. But its location is based on a critical material that is hard to find elsewhere. A big upside to this method is performance. Like I mentioned when talking about mega factories, putting too many buildables in one spot can be taxing on your computer's performance, so building smaller spread out factories can result in a smoother game with higher FPS. Working with liquids should be easier, since you would simply build a relevant factory close to whatever liquid you need, rather than transporting it across the map. It also means you're forced to explore and interact with more of the map, rather than simply putting a resource on a belt bus or a train and then never seeing it again, because you spend the whole game in your main base. This could also be a downside though, as you will need to traverse the map more often if you need to diagnose an issue or grab a component from a faraway factory or expand a factory. It also makes transportation logistics more difficult, as you need to traverse long distances and plan how iron ingots are going to be moved to a second factory to get made into reinforced plates, and those reinforced plates are going to go to a third factory to get turned into heavy modular frames, all while every other part is also moving across the map at the same time. You might end up with a crisscross of belts and trains going every which way. Creating modular factories themselves is pretty easy compared to designing a mega factory, but it can be monotonous. That's why you want to have blueprints set up for the basics. You'll be building these small outposts pretty often, so having a consistent blueprint you can pull out will save you a lot of time and let you focus more on the fun parts of the building process like decorating. You'll also need some planning. If you're constructing Mark V belts near a bauxite node for an aluminum setup, then how are you going to get those belts back to a central location where they are easily accessible for factory building? If you're building your nuclear setup in the swamp, perhaps, how do you easily make your way up and down the cliff in order to fix emergencies that crop up? Without everything already attached and in a central location, you need infrastructure planning, both in terms of transporting the items to wherever they may need to go next, and for transporting yourself if you want to go to that factory at some point. So roads, hypertubes, hypertube cannons, and trains should be kept in mind when deciding where to build different items, and you'll probably spend more time on highways and train tracks and all that stuff than if you had done a mega base. This is a problem I have in my own save that I haven't bothered solving yet. I have a road from my main base in the desert to my nuclear setup in the swamp, but the only way I have to get to my aluminum factory that lives deep in the Titan Forest is by taking a train. The only problem is that train doesn't come that often, so I need to wait for it. Usually I end up just slide jumping my way there after taking the road as far as I can, but that's not efficient. I didn't think of my own personal transportation method when setting up this factory in a hard to reach area, 
and now I have to deal with that until I get around to fixing it. I highly recommend planning in advance, so don't be like me. In general, modular factories are all about figuring out what to transport and at what stage in the production process is the most efficient. In general, you don't want to transport raw materials very far, and instead maybe split factories into several tiers to determine when to move materials to a new factory. In my head, stage 1 is smelting raw ore into ingots, or the equivalent for other materials. Stage 2 is pretty basic items like rods, plates, and wire that are generally just made from ingots. Tier 3 is the next level of processing, like things made in assemblers, which could be things like modular frames and encased industrial beams. Tier 4 is advanced manufacturer items like supercomputers, batteries, and nuclear fuel rods. And then Tier 5 could be the most complex items such as space elevator parts. Keep these different stages in mind when building your modular factories, they might help you. So those are the two main methods of making factories in Satisfactory. But in reality, you will likely not use either of these methods in its purest form. The majority of players, myself included, tend to create a modestly sized central base, and then a lot of smaller factories of trains that can bring in processed items, rather than just bringing back the raw materials. This means you can process high level parts and have access to everything you need, like in a mega base, but it also lets you build a variety of factories in different parts of the map. This is probably what you'll end up doing, or at least you'll do something like this. But I admire anyone who can commit to the level of planning and time required to go all in on one of these two strategies. If you have any more tips for either factory type, please leave them in the comments, but otherwise, like the video if it helped, and subscribe for future satisfactory content.